I am from Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Sunset Park, Brooklyn is a low-income community of color. Uh, low-income communities of color are probably the communities that are most affected by climate change. When Sandy hit, and even before when Irene hit, um, we, while we didn't um, feel uh, the devastating effects as much as other communities, um, it was definitely kind of a wake-up call. When coming to like Common Justice, it teaches you about restoring back, like getting, finding solutions and finding restoratives to basically bounce back from what you've been through before. We're learning that about health and how to stay healthy and how to like redeem yourself after you know after after all you've been through with diseases and stuff like that. So we have like um, we learned a statistic that African Americans and Latinos um, have a high percentage of having um, like diseases like high cholesterol, like high blood pressure, like lack of iron, like um, poor nutrition, like poor nutrition stuff and. The reason for it is it's three main causes. is um, lack of water, which is dehydration. Then it's um, lack of sleep, and then it's mucus buildup. When we're in California, we are waiting for the governor and our city government to, to give us mandatory uh, cutbacks on water, to say you have to reduce your water consumption by such and such percent. What does that mean for people who are in multifamily homes who already don't use that much water versus a golf course? That serves who? mostly rich folks. That waters their green lawns every single day. Who can afford to cut back your water? A mom of seven or a golf course? Uh, the ratio with the cost of living to the housing compared to uh, how much we make at work are are really uh, too good. So we make like the cost of living is increasing too much compared to the amount of uh, money we're making per year. We are, what's happening now with the environment is the result of things that happened about 50, 40 to 50 years ago. So uh, what we're feeling right now is not based on something that happened in the next, I mean, in the past maybe five or 10 years, but what, uh, what has happened uh, in 1970, 1960s. Now imagine how much more fossil fuels we're burning and putting into the air and how much more we're impacting the earth today and now think what it's gonna look like 30, 40 years from today, right? So 30, 40 years ago was somewhere around here, right? So this amount of fossil fuels has ca is causing what we're, the wreaking of havoc that we're feeling today on Earth. the Labor Network for Sustainability, uh, just did a study of the new Clean Power Plan uh, rules that uh, Obama, the Obama administration just put out. There will actually be more jobs created through the plan by switching over to clean energy. There was like 96,000 jobs, and there would be 13,000 jobs that would be lost, like coal miners and folks that work in the oil and uh, the power plant industries. It's possible for us to actually create more work and address both the economic crisis in our communities and the, uh, the environmental crisis. You who live in your neighborhood, whether it's Iron Mount, whether it's the Bronx, whether it's Brooklyn, you know how to run your community the, better than the politicians who are making decisions about it. So for us, it's about getting people in their local communities the decision-making power and the ability and putting their hands back into their own communities to be able to build it with their folks. For us, as the men and young people, is if we're talking about a just transition, that means that we are moving back into our traditional ways of farming and um, land restoration, moving back into that and creating our own restorative economy, creating our own jobs um, with the youth. We need to understand that nobody is going to make this happen for us. It is up to us 
those that are accelerating the climate crisis are not going to provide the solutions. They're not going to lead the climate justice movement. We are the leaders of the climate justice